Okay, so we need to break this up into three different videos because we have a lot of ground to cover. And I first want to start with a block out of the Pomodoro application. We want to build a timer that is going to time for 25 minutes of work time and then give a break for about five or 10 minutes and then start itself over back into working mode. We'll build it so that we have an icon that changes and data that will change with the icon and we'll interact with scripts and properties and variables back and forth between Serpens and Python. First thing we want to do is duplicate our visual scripting workspace. And I'm going to talk on my screencast keys. I'm going to consolidate all this area. And then we're going to build up a split screen below, set it to be the text editor. And we're going to make two different text editors so we can change one of these windows at any given time. And we're going to make a new script. So we have a script that is specifically for our timer. Make sure we save that script. And we'll make another new script. I like to name my script starting with the word script. And I've got a bunch of icons that I built that are in the Serpent's Marketplace. If you go to Edit Prefs, what you can do is open up the Marketplace and download this if you like. Otherwise, you can just use the header menu to save everything. Refresh, and you should see in here there is a text editor easy menu. You can download that, install it, and follow along. So I just have a save as where I'm saving these scripts once I build them. We have a start Pomo script, and we're going to have a stop Pomodoro script. Do a save as. So now we got all three scripts built and saved. And let's make sure we rename this. Save as Pomodoro starts. Because I duplicated it, let's just make sure I'm saving all these again. Okay, so we've got all three of our scripts built. We're going to call and define our timer in the script Pomo timer. And we have to define that when Serpens loads the add-on, or when Blender loads the add-on that Serpens is exported. And every time Blender opens, we want this script to be ran to define our timer. So we can do that using a script node under the program and script. Drag out. And we're going to run a script. So the intent of this is that we're going to start the script promo timer. And once the Pomodoro timer is defined, we can register and unregister it. And there's a, we'll get into this more in the second video, but in the Blender API manual, there is a bpy.app.timer section, and you can search the docs for that and you get to the application timers. And it's in the application data section. At the bottom here, we're gonna make use of registering and unregistering a function to become a timer. And then we'll be returning a time. And we're not doing that in this video, we'll cover that in the next one of the three video series here. But let's go ahead and, we've got this set up on our main graph for the time recorder. And anything else we need to run, will run on the main graph. So as of right now, I've got it here just above our panel. Let's go ahead and block out another graph, and this will be everything associated with the Pomodoro. And let's bookmark it so we can toggle back and forth between the two graphs. So we'll swap over to 3D viewport, and we want another menu icon, so we're gonna add to the menu that's already here on the top. And we will make ourselves an interface add to menu. Click on the eyedropper icon and we're going to append the menu that's right next to our other timer icon. 
will drag out and what we're going to want is a button. The button is going to be used to toggle the timer on and off and will register and unregister the timer since it's been defined. We'll just give it a quick label called Pomo and we need to build ourselves a toggling operator. In order to toggle something on and off, we need to make a variable. And so inside of here, we can do a variable called Pomo toggle. Make it a Boolean and a default value of false, and then we'll get its value. And we need to create our operator. So Shift A, Program Operator. And then we want to look at the value and then set the value opposite of whatever it is so that we can toggle it on and off. And we can use a if then or an if program, if else program node. Because it takes in a Boolean input and determines whether something is true or false for execute outputs. You also have a continue. Once you're done doing a true or false execution, you can continue doing other code. And it, it's irrespective of whether something's true or false. Okay, so we want to start our Pomodoro and stop it. We got our program and we could run a script, but I want to be able to have the availability to call another operator if we need to do more things. So we'll just call a run operator node for both of the true and false. And then we need to set the toggle bit at each action as well. So if the toggle is false, we want to make it true. If the toggle is true, we want to make it false. And for the operators, if the toggle is false, we want to start our Pomodoro timer. If it's true, we want to stop. So let's make two operators. I can just grab this, Shift-D, and move it down. And we'll call this one Start Pomodoro. We'll call this one Stop Pomodoro. And these are going to make use of our scripts that we blocked out. So a run script node for this one, and a run script node for this one. And it might be handy, rather than relying on the variable to be toggled inside of here, it may be worth putting these variables inside the execution of the operator itself. So we'll drag these over. Connect them like so. And then we can use the getter on the variable. Duplicate that up and we can use it for the toggle or the depress for our button. And you can see that once I compile the add-on. Oh, we need to do our toggle Pomodoro operator. Compile and notice we have now a Pomo button. Click it. And oh, we need to set up our start and stops as well. So if we're true, we want to stop. And if we're false, we want to start. Let's compile again. There we go, now we're toggling back and forth. And the depress is being called just by getting the variable's value for Pomo toggle. That's a very basic block out for the UI. Now for the next video, we need a bunch of variables for our scripts and some properties, and we'll build some icons for video three. Let's just put them all in now. So we have two more variables we need to create. We need one that's keeping track of how many minutes we're using in our Pomodoro when it's toggled on, and how many Pomodoros we've completed. Set that for default value of zero as an integer. 
and we'll set that one as an integer as well. And for our properties, notice our variables are going to be tied to this pomo graph, um, but our properties will not be. We're going to create four properties. One to define how often the, the timer is being called, and we'll just use this for debugging. Set this one up as a float, and the subtype we can set as a time. And our unit for time, and we are going to set a default value of this one to 1, and I'll just set a precision of 1. We don't want to do anything less than 0 0.1, and we'll set a soft maximum of uh, 24 hours, because we're going to be calling this timer every second or in the values of seconds. We need to define a work time. Set that to an integer, give it a default value of 1, a hard minimum of 1, and a soft maximum of 24. 24 hours if we were going to use a second. We'll set a break time. Do the same thing. And we need to also set, set whether we have an active break or not. And this is going to be a Boolean. Make a default value of false. So we've got our properties, we've got our variables, now we need some icons. And I've got a Gumroad page set up for this video series as well. And we've got some tomato icons, a tomato slice, a bunch of divisions of a tomato slice, a full tomato, a dead tomato, and a super awesome tomato. So let's go ahead and I'm going to build all of those icons now just to have them. And then I'll assign you some homework at the end of the third video series so that you already have them set up and ready to go. There we go. There's all of our Pomo icons. Now we're only going to use these three here, and then your homework will be figuring out how to make use of the rest. That should be good enough for a basic block out on our icons, for our graph, our program properties, and for our variables. In the next video, we're going to set up the scripts and call in both the variables and properties and be able to change their values inside the Python console text editor. And then we will go from there to adding in some more functionality for our button. We'll make use of a switch icon, switch data, and give some notifications to the user when the timers are done. We'll catch you on the next video.